What's up, Go Enthusiasts? Today, I would like to share with you my Go story, how I learned Go, where I learned Go, how I started ranking up, what I learned, and how I just recently became Mindon. I actually have I dug into the archives and I found the first game that I ever played against a human on OGS. I picked up Go in February 2017, and actually this isn't the first game on my OGS account. I first played against a bot about a week before this game. And I remember this. I had logged on to online-go.com and I tried to play against the weakest spot that I could. And I knew that Q was the weak rank and Don was the strong rank. And I saw that at the highest part, there were the, the nine Don bots. And I was like, okay, that's, you know, that's not what I'm going for. I'm going to go for the weakest spot possible. So I went to the Q ranks and I found the lowest number and I played against the one Q bot. <laughs> That was my first game ever on OGS. I got smacked. I got destroyed. I was like, wow, these Go players are insane. That was the beginner bot. <laughs> it was not the beginner bot. The weakest rank, of course, is, is not 1Q, it's 30Q. <laughs> but I didn't know that. And uh, so I got destroyed and I was like, I don't know, how, how do I learn this game? That was impossible. I'll never learn if I just play against that bot. It made no mistakes the whole game. Of course, 25Q would, would think like that. Um, uh, so what I did is I picked up a, a bot from another software called EgoWin, where it starts off by giving you five handicap on a nine by nine. So that's an enormous amount of handicap and the bot isn't even very good. So there's, you know, by all rights, I should be able to win, but I still lost like many times. And I started playing this bot. Uh, you rank up if you beat it enough on, on five handicap, it gives you four handicap and you, you rank up from there. Um, I played that bot like 70 times before I went back to OGS again and played against my first human. So you can see, I know how the stones work. I'm like saving my stone from Atari. I'm gonna ladder this this two stone thing. I knew what ladders were. And um, it's really not that bad quality for a first game ever against a human because I had already played bots like 70 times. <laughs> Uh, so after this, I ranked up pretty quickly to 17Q, but I actually plateaued there. And it was very frustrating, I remember, because I couldn't find any content aimed at 17Qs who are stuck, who are, who are hard to, you know, having a hard time improving. And I recognize that that still is a gap that just exists. And it's one of the most annoying ranks to be stuck at because it's hard to even know what you need to do to improve. Like, obviously, you can do all these things to improve that are aimed at 5Q players and, and all those sort of lectures. But uh, if you could do that perfectly every time, then you wouldn't have to worry about being stuck at 17Q. Like, what's the main thing that the 17Q has to has to worry about? And um, uh, so I, I started watching some YouTube content, some Twitch content. I watched Nick Sabicki, I watched Batsko. They were both very helpful. And I remember eventually having this revelation that all I should do is make sure I never pass. <laughs> <laughs> make sure that all of my moves, they do something. Like, regardless of whether it's good or not, I just won't pass in any of my games. And that bumped me. I immediately broke through my my uh, 17Q plateau. And I, I got all the way up to 11 or 10Q on, on OGS. I was very happy to be 10 or 11Q after just a month. I was, I was like, let's go, let's go. But little did I know, I would get stuck again. And this time it took a lot longer to get out of 10 or 11Q. It was very hard for me, actually. Um, I started watching a lot of Batsko, uh, his Twitch streams, his YouTube videos. I, I liked it a lot. His uh, great content, he still is, by the way. He's a great content creator. Um, it took me six months until I eventually decided to stop playing every game on OGS, and I switched to KGS. And on KGS, you can't sign up as a rank. You have to play a couple of games and, and get ranked. And somehow, I won against like a 5Q, and I got provisionally ranked as a 4Q. And when I saw that, I was like, oh my god, I better play really well and try to keep it. <laughs> and somehow, just this like urge to keep that rank that I had gotten, it actually made me play with very few blunders compared to how I had been playing it. You know, the, my role before had been, I will never pass, but I was blundering a lot. I was just like losing stones here, losing stones there every game, and that's how I was losing. And so I started being very careful towards the liberty weaknesses, towards towards blundering that kind of thing. And just with that, I was able to be 4Q. I had basically no idea about anything strategy. I would just not waste my moves and not blunder. <laughs> and that was enough to get me to KGS 4Q. But it wasn't enough to get past that. I got stuck again. And this, is, I think, is how improvement works for a lot of people. It wasn't like a clean rise at all. It was just uh, stop and start, stop and start. 
uh, bursts of inspiration that lead me all the way up to much higher ranks, and then I get, get stuck at the end there. And at 4Q, the way that I would lose games is I would get tricked. And I swear, any time that any opponent tried any trick on me, I would fall for it. Every single time. And I remember this very, very vividly. Like, there was um, a string of, like, 20 games or so where I would never, ever stop a trick. There was no moment where my opponent would, like, try to make something special happen and I would realize it beforehand and stop it. Like, I, I fell for it every single time. And I started to get really annoyed at my reading skill. I was like, man... The strong players, when I watch bats, he just reads, he finds the trick, and then he doesn't he doesn't fall for it. Even in the the basic series, it's very hard when you're a strong player to accidentally fall for a trick that you know exists and you don't even really have to read to to fall for it. Um, and so what I did is I started uh, doing Sumego. I I got really addicted to doing Sumego on GoProblems.com, which in my opinion, is an inferior site to the new 101 Weichi. I like 101 Weichi more if you want to do Go Problems. But um, GoProblems.com, I had a lot of fun trying to rank up there. There's a, a rank that goes with your um, problem-solving skill. You solve a problem, you go up. You, you fail a problem, you go down. And I grinded that really hard for a couple months, and I became one Don on GoProblems.com. I was very proud of myself. And I started to feel like I really understood the game at a at a decent level. Like I could find all the tricks. I, I would never pass. I would find the tricks. I would not blunder. Excuse me. And my strategy was still god awful, but it doesn't matter. Like uh, as long as you, you don't blunder, you find the tricks and you, you, you don't pass. That's pretty good. And so I thought that I, I would be strong enough. I had enough understanding of how influence worked and how it could capture stones to be able to be one done. So I arrogantly signed up to a new Taijim account. The first time I ever played on Asian servers as a one Q. And I tried to rank up to one Don. And lo and behold, I didn't just make it to one Don. I made it to three Don in the end of my first year of playing. I was tied from three Don. I was very proud. And I went to Go Congress. It was very fun. So here I'm going to share with you a game from the first Go Congress that I went to. This is about one and a half years after I started learning Go. And I signed up as AGA three Don, which was uh, ambitious. But I knew that I could do it. Because whenever I had a lot of time, I would play much better than when I play on short time. And of course, the Go Congress games are long time. And that had good reason. The reason why is that I had no idea what was going on ever in my games. I would just read and read and read and read. And I was a reading monster. I, I would just read everything that I possibly could and use that to figure out what was going on. So when I had a lot of time on my clock, I could read everything. And I would generally know what was going on a lot better than when I had no time on my clock because the reading would tell me. <laughs> I'd read and I'd be like, oh, if I go that way, then I die in the fight. And I'd, I'd be reading my fights out just to figure out like what's weak and what's strong. Um, it's a pretty funny way to play looking back on it, but it was a lot of fun. And this Go Congress that I went to in Williamsburg, Virginia was my favorite vacation of my whole life that, that I'd ever had. And I think it will be for the rest of my life. It was just so unimaginably fun to go to meet Go players, really, to hang out with them, to play squash, to play um, Perigo, to play with, you know, all sorts of random Go events. And uh, I got to meet Eric Louis, who I'm now friends with. I, I like that guy a lot. He's a really cool guy, but I, I don't think he remembers meeting me because I was an absolute noob. And all I remember thinking was, wow, these guys, these professionals, these really high-level players, they just instantly know what's going on in their game. How do they do that? It's amazing. <laughs> Because for me, I could never figure out what was going on in my game, even though I spent like 15 minutes. It was, uh, I had no, you know, no strategic judgment at all. And um, just a fantastic experience, this Go Congress. I loved it so much. And this is when I started calling myself Telegraph Go. This is when I really committed to being... Um, Telegraph was my handle a lot of the time before this. And, and I had picked the Telegraph because... I, when I was 12, I thought I was good at reading people, and also my last name is Morse, so it's like a pun on, on I'm the telegraph. All your moves are, are <laughs> belong to me. And um, yeah, so at this moment, I, I finally chose to call myself Telegraph Go to, to show that I had fully 100% committed that Go is the game that I'm going to play for, you know, it's my main game for, for my life, and I've never looked back. I've, I've never even taken a break since... Uh, since this moment in Go for longer than like a week or anything. Uh, I just love the game. Anyway, from here, I 
took that Telegraph Go name and I brought it to Twitch. I started streaming actually shortly after this Go Congress, uh, partly just to, to talk to more Go people again, and partly because there were some gaps. I, I loved watching Twitch streams. I followed the Twitch Go directory. And so I would, um, you know, in breaks, I'd just open up Twitch Go. And if there was any Go streamer streaming, I'd, I'd watch. And I loved, <laughs> I loved doing that. And a lot of the time there was no Twitch Go streamer. And I, you know, it made me a little sad. So I started to pick up streaming. Actually, my very first stream was commentating a game by Antti Tormanen. And then I also streamed, my first like series of streams was an attempt to reach goproblems.com 9 don, which I failed, but I tried. <laughs> um, and you can tell by, by that my reading was, you know, I was still doing lots of Sumego and, and trying to improve it. Actually, I wouldn't improve my reading very much for a long time after that. It was difficult, but uh, I was trying. <laughs> In general, improvement becomes more difficult once you get to this level, this mid dawn level, where you have to start getting some um, idea of the truths in the game to be able to play it better, to have some strategies and to have some idea of how the game is supposed to go. It started to take me a long time to improve from here. And I would improve more slowly. It was less about the bursts, although the bursts would still happen, the sort of enlightenments would still happen. It wouldn't show up in your rank, because the ranks, there's only a few left to go, right? To, to get to Don rank. And um, you can't easily jump two or three ranks just because you have some epiphany. Anyway, uh, I tried, and I, I was continuing to play Go very actively, to do some Mega very actively for the next few years. Eventually, in the pandemic, I reached 8 Dawn for the first time. So that was, I checked in 2020, uh, in April. I reached Fox 8 Dawn for the very first time. So that was not so bad, although it felt like the improvement was slow. That was just about three years after I started playing. I was already in 8 Dawn on Fox. And that's honestly, you know, pretty good. From there, I especially had a hard time improving, and I've been <laughs> been trying a lot. I do a lot of Sumego, I do a lot of games, I play with AI, I, I review all my games. Uh, one thing that I didn't talk about yet that I think was my superpower that allowed me to improve so much is that I self-reviewed very often and very well. Um, my self-reviews, I would always give myself a couple things to, like, seriously do better next time that I got any similar position. And basically every game that I played, I was getting noticeably better in at least some respect because everything that I would give myself in self-review is absolutely doable. It was, you know, not always correct, but it was doable. I had an idea of why it would be better and I would try to apply it the next time. And if I only gave myself a couple things then I could actually seriously remember it and, and do it better. So self-review, if you want to improve at a similar pace <laughs> like uh, like me obviously sumego is very useful but self-review is the number one thing that can be your superpower too if you just make sure like after this game i began to notice when my groups like this get surrounded and i stopped doing that thing in the center which was i connected on two sides so those two things i noticed were what eventually blundered me this game at this point black uh has killed me so i just resigned and the reason why that that happened is uh, is simple. At, at this moment, earlier, uh, I played this move thinking I could connect to both sides and it was reduction. But I stopped doing it after this game because I realized that's actually just, it gives you a debt. And black Atari here a couple times forced me to connect. And then this wedge was a double threat to cut off my center and to cut in the bottom side. So I just tried to do this one and hoped that I wouldn't die on the bottom, but he, he killed me. <laughs> anyway. I was still self-reviewing, I was still learning all this stuff, but it was really hard, it's really hard to take that final step from mid-dawn and even eight-dawn to, to nine-dawn. It's a really, really different world, a uh, different game that you're playing at that point. And I think that that's the, the most um, important thing. So I'm going to show you one more game of, of me against Yankyo here. Since I became Fox 9 Don the other day, I just played one game, actually. It was against Yunkyo Do, also known as Go Inside on YouTube. She's been playing me a lot lately. Here, I'm going to start the game replay. And playing against Yunkyo so much, and as well as playing against Michael Chen, Z Chen, uh, you can find his YouTube channel at Z Chen Mike. Playing them, 
the two professional, you know, closest friends that I have so often has really, really helped me improve a lot. I've also played against AI a lot other than them. And basically over the last half year, when I played a long game, a serious game, it was either against AI or it was against these two. And that really forced me to play only high level moves. Anything that was just, you know, maybe you can cut it against a weaker player, not going to cut it against those quality of opponents. And doing that, it, it showed me it, how to apply a lot of the things that I've started to understand and started to use as I've truly become a, a high don amateur player. And the most important thing for those mid dons watching who want to know how do I take that next step, you can look at what happens in the high level games, in the pro games, in the nine don games, whatever, and you can. Think about what the biggest difference is between your play and their play. That's what I would do. And for me, the biggest difference a lot of the time was the speedy understanding. <laughs> the nine dons enjoy playing 15 second games. And even as I ranked up to eight don, I still just could not wrap my head around how, like, how can you possibly play 15 second games and just not blunder the whole time? What you need to do is you need to have a really high consistency of positional judgment and speed of positional judgment. And that kind of judgment that I'm talking about is exactly um, understanding what type of position you're playing and being an expert in any type of position that you could play. You don't have to be perfect. It's, you know, no one at, at a uh, high down amateur is perfect at any stage of the game or anything. But you do have to be good enough to consider any position that you get. That's your wheelhouse. That's the part where you know how to win from that kind of position. That's a big step forward from mid down. Most mid down players are comfortable with a couple kinds of positions. I, when I was a, a AGA three down, I was very comfortable in those heavy reading fights, and I had no idea what to do if it was not a heavy reading fight. Now I've become more comfortable with, for example, the in invasion kind of sequence here. I messed it up in the in the bottom left corner, but also I was saving my group in the upper left corner. At the start of this game, I played some Moyo thing, but that only lasted for a few moves, and then since then we have a totally different kind of game. Here I went for a sacrifice to uh, to save my group in the corner, which turned out to be a little bit bad, and I understand how I can do this better in the future. This is maybe my weakest part of my game at the moment, but it's really, really important. The main thing, the main difference between nine don and, and mid don, um, you have to know what kind of thing that you're doing pretty much immediately, no matter what. You have to be comfortable no matter what you have to do. And reading. <laughs> reading is still really important. If you have really good reading, it's going to be hard not to be nine done. Um, just the reading power itself, you can just read fights and then understand them by reading them. <laughs> and uh, if you if you have that level where you can do that, actually just not reading fights, um, you'll understand them better because you'll remember you read fights similar to that. And it's a it's a cheat code to to get better to just be good at reading. So here I was reading this fight. I was reading the cutting fight, and I cut off her group on the top side. And I put her under some really, really serious pressure with this whole group in the in the center of the board. I cut it off like this. And um, the attack here is going to work. I'm going to capture that group on the right side because I know how to attack. And the most common kind of position that I got in my road up from 8-ton to 9-ton in just the, the Fox games was the kind where my opponent says, hey, you don't know how to kill me, and I show them that I know how to kill. Because I'm pretty good at the murdering kind of games. <laughs> um, and that's, it makes me good at punishing overplays, and it's pretty good. So here I thought I would just win the game easily, uh, even though I haven't beaten Young Kyo in quite a while. Um, I captured the whole right side of the board from that attack, and I'm also reducing the bottom side. So I thought I would win comfortably, and I let off the gas, actually. So... I should have continued my end game skill. I should have thought this is this is the end game. This is my wheelhouse. Let me show you why I am significantly better at the end game than you. But I didn't think like that. I thought like 
cruise control, make sure nothing happens. It wasn't high enough, a uh, high level enough play to defeat Yunkyo here. So she caught up in the end game so much. I missed opportunities in the top side and just everywhere throughout the board. I was playing some slightly suspicious end game, and then she she's gonna win this game once again, defeating me. But this one was close. <laughs> it was much closer than many of the other games that we've played. I feel like I keep leveling up playing against her. I really appreciate, by the way, all the games that we've played. You can find um, videos of them on her channel. Go inside. The link will be in the description. Every player has their own weaknesses and their own strengths, and they can learn about how to handle them. Um, they can... Yeah, at this point, I still thought I was winning. I played some passive endgame. You have to be honest with yourself about what exactly is the difference between you and the player that you'd like to be if you want to improve. And it's a little difficult to do. It's much easier said than done to actually be honest with yourself and say, I really, I do need to be better like that. A lot of the time you can be like, that's not possible. That's inhuman. You have to say it's not inhuman. And actually, I could do it. Here's what I have to do. And, and and chase your your uh, your go dreams. It's very it's been very satisfying for me, and I uh, I really enjoyed playing all these games with with Young Kyo, playing all these high level games. High level go is so much fun. Low level go is fun too, of course. You guys can <laughs> enjoy the game, but I'm having a blast out here, and I'm gonna keep covering go for a long long time. This is not the end of my go story. Maybe someday there will be a another video like this telling a story of how this YouTube channel goes. But for me personally, I think that this is still early stages, too early to tell the tale of when I went from Twitch to YouTube and all that. I'm hoping that uh, from here we'll have a long, long journey ahead of us and a glorious one. Look forward to seeing you there. I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.